Well, you know, Al Ghanim uh, family probably is one of the oldest families here. We and the Al Sabah family immigrated from Central Arabia 300 plus years ago. We have a very close relationship with the royal. We are intermarried with the royal family. We have uh, cousins with each other. But uh, many Kuwaiti families, uh, you see, Kuwait is a small, uh, I would say a small organization that's integrated with each other. Most of the families are intermarried with each other. Most of us are cousins to others, etc. whether it be uh, Al-Sabah or Al-Ghanim or whoever it is. The important thing is that they have lived in the past very close with each other. They have lived in the past as if they were one, one family. I remember when I was young, uh, 10 years ago, I will never forget an incident that happened. There was this, you know, they used to trade in the Dows to go to India, to East Africa. And uh, one of the Dows sunk here near Kuwait. The owner of the Dow and the owner of the who is supposed responsible for the uh, businesses that was being brought, the products, etc. Of course, they used to live on debt. They would uh, get a loan and from other people and go and buy and come and sell here. He lost everything. Before the sun set, I'll never forget, I was told by my, one person came, who have a, they used to call Sugil Tejar, which is the market street where most of the businessmen had their offices there. One of the businessmen came up with a paper. This is the name of the guy that lost his wealth on this one. What can we do? He went through the offices. By the time he ended to the end one, the guy received more than what he has lost. And he returned back, the rest they said, no, this is your wealth. So, I mean, this was Kuwait before. Unfortunately, today it's not the same. Uh, Envinous, uh, competition, etc., has overcome uh, what I would call a one family uh, theme at that time. But still, many Kuwaitis. Or, I mean, you should see today as Kuwait, and not only the Kuwaitis, uh, internationally, how they are donating to uh, the needs of other people. Uh, we're proud to see that our ruler has been named man of humanity, humanitarian by the United Nations, and Kuwait has been named that. And there, I, I, I remember when I went to see, to meet uh, President Salva Kerr, about four years ago, five years ago, I was surprised that I that Southern Sudan, in the 60s, they used to get aid from Kuwait. Kuwait built a hospital, built schools there. Who ever thought of Southern Sudan that time? And it was our ambassador, uh, Abdullah Sreya at that time. They call him Abdullah Juba, who visited uh, Southern Sudan and came to our late ruler and told him they are living uh, uh, without any shelter. And by the way, most of them are Christians, not Muslims. His reply was, don't ever differentiate between religions. Christians, Jews, Muslims are in the Quran. He immediately gave instructions to build hospitals, to build schools, to build shelters for them, everything. When I visited there, I saw a house that was, it was like a museum. And President Samuel Kerr told me, this is the house of Abdullah Juba, our late ambassador. Because he was the man that has, uh, you know, that helped us. To, and today, this is a visiting place. So, I mean, Kuwait as a government, and the Kuwaitis, a lot of Kuwait, many of the Kuwaitis donate to the poor outside Kuwait, and it's, although we don't have poor here in Kuwait, we have middle class and upper class, but there are a lot of uh, people worldwide that are in need, 
And uh, I don't think the Kuwaitis differentiate between religions or uh, whether he is Chinese, whether he's American, whether it's, as long as there is a need, they will do it.